there, welcome to this unboxing. Well, this is for Agra. Um, this is trading in ancient uh, India, isn't it? Now, out the Essen crop, this is the one that caught my eye. I've only bought one game out the Essen crop. Well, I bought an expansion as well for the colonists. Uh, the, uh, a guy, Rob, in uh, Holland, as um, it's on my, it's on the way to me now. He picked it up for me. Uh, so thanks to Rob for that. And um, yeah, so Agra really caught my eye now. The only uh, criticism I've seen, or major one, is this, the slanted board where bits can fall off it. So we've got a bit of a hack for that, I think, that we're going to try. And that's drilling and gluing in some 6mm neon Neo Earth magnets underneath the wooden slanted pieces and putting a piece of metal underneath the board itself, which I happen to have quite a lot of pieces of. Or you could use some folded up um, tin foil, I guess. But we'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll have a look at that and see how that works out. But apparently there's a lot in this box. Super complex game. Really piqued my interest. If you want to see a good rules overview of this, um, have a look at the Man vs. Meeple video. Uh, that describes in pretty, quite a lot of detail most of uh, the flavour of the game and what's going on. Today we're just going to have a look at the production copy, what's come in the box, and as luck would have it, uh, yesterday came another, this is by Quinnard Games, and yesterday another Quinnard Games came, and this was a Kickstarter we did for uh, Halloween. Um, shame it didn't come in time for Halloween, but it's supposed to be quite a meaty game, so we'll have a look at that later as well. Um, I think it's got a nice sleeve or book bookcase, because this is a, I've just noticed there's an indentation here the Quinnard Games sign. So that's by Quinnard Games also, we'll have a look at that later. Um, right, so let's have a look at inside the box of Agra. Unfortunately, I've got a bit of a ding on the box corner there. I hate it when that happens, but it's not too bad. Um, okay, so first of all we have a raw book in German. And here's the English one. Okay, and um, what's this here? Well, wow, four rule books, okay. Uh, I guess Spanish. And is it French? I'm not sure. But anyway, this is the English one. So there's an index right on the front there. It shows us about components. Game components, game setup, the imperial board. Yeah, that's apparently the problem with these. If one little knock, and, and down they go. So we're going to try the little hack with the uh, magnets on that. See how that works out. <clears throat> I can't wait to open up the board of this because apparently it's a work of art, and also because it's such a work of art, um, that. Uh, it can be a little unintuitive to actually use the, the main game board because of that. But we'll have a look and we'll see. I think there's a great game lurking in this box, so I don't mind doing a little couple of hacks to try and get it working. So this is interesting, isn't it? Straight away we've got this inner uh, that pulls out like so with these bits in. Um, these, this is a nice touch, isn't it? They could have just chucked bags in uh, without the game's logo on, but they've all got the nice game's logo on there in the player colours as well, which is a really nice uh, different player colours. So we've got a, like a lime green, uh, pink, orange, and a really nice... Did you say that's like an aquamarine blue there? Yeah. Very nice. Plenty of baggies. There's a lot there. A deck of cards. Um, let's have a quick look. Funny, uh, unusual little size cards. These reasonably good quality. And the cartoony sort of uh, Indian artwork there. We've got some nice little glass marking gems there that are a universal size, so that's quite nice. And a D6 there. 
which is quite a nice unusual colour. Uh, player pieces. It's quite nice that they're all ready separated into into the colours. Normally that's something you have to do, don't you, out of one large bag, so that's not bad. You've got the orange, the lime green, the blue, and the that's still it's pink, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then we've got some large pieces here. We've got the boatman, an elephant. It's sort of like a worker. I thought it was a monkey for a minute, but it's not. It's a worker with like a, a hammer in his hand, like a big star piece. Okay. So it's you know production quality of those is awesome, isn't it? Um, let's have a look further into the box. And the rest of this is all. They've gone really out to, to stop this from knocking up, haven't they? You know, putting all that in shrink so none of it slips around and uh, gets knocked up. Well, that's a nice touch in the box itself, isn't it? You know, at the bottom there, nice uh, pattern. And this is a, a, an insert that slips into the box as well. So, you know, they've gone, they've gone all out on production, haven't they? It just looks like that somebody else suggested. Nick Case, I was talking to on board game geek that the game probably got play tested and then they decided to spend quite a bit of money on production and that slanted board although it looks great in practice it's just not practical is it so there needs to be something done with that and I'm hoping the magnets uh, work a treat and they're quite a simple and uh, extremely economical to be honest work around these play boards nice good really fit quality oh and that's nice isn't it on the back I guess these are, I'll look at that in the player colours. So, pretty nice. Really good fit quality. And even uh, the colour of the, the uh, like tent fabric on, on the outside of these little buildings is, uh, is matched to the player colours. It's a nice touch. This is that slanted board. The board itself is pretty thick. Um, yeah, so I, I'm planning on putting my piece of metal on the back of this. Uh, I would think the earth magnets will still stick perfectly through that. Punch board sheet, number one, pretty centralised there. Punches out quite easy. I say pretty centralised, perfectly centralised. And it's good fix, sturdy cardstock, none of that, none of that uh, soggy or soft stuff. And really good coins, aren't they, and stuff. So, yeah. Pretty impressed by these. Another punch board. And another punch board. And then we come to the creme de la creme. This is the uh, player board. So I think we need a bit of space for this. Clear the table. Let's have a look. Uh, so the back side of this has the artwork of the game without the game board on it, so to speak. So purely the art, which is a nice touch. You've got to be very careful opening up these large game boards that you don't turn them. So hang on, we're coming down this way. So it's an eight fold board. Soon get that to lay flat. I hope, giving it a little bit of back bend. Stretch them seams just slightly. Are we there? Are we there yet? There we go. Pretty much what I've got here. Need a bit of a back bend here. And in there, that's it, we've got a, that is one gigantic board. I wasn't expecting it to be that big. I know I'd seen uh, pictures and videos of the board, but it's still in person. That is uh, that is one gigantic board. And I can see where it could get a little bit busy. We've got these arrow things in. There's apparently some sort of a bit of a problem with them but I've got plenty of little discs and things I could even use to mark out so I'm determined to get a good workaround for this because I'm really intrigued it looks a looks a fantastic game so yeah the board is a little bit busy let's have a look at the the just the artwork side there we go Oops. and there we go yeah they didn't have to do that did they so that's a nice touch as well beautiful artwork um, <laughs> So there's a ton of stuff in this game. Ah, oh, critical. Absolute mountains of stuff. That is Agra. It's a game by Mike Keller. 
and that fantastic artwork is by Michael Menzel, which is, he's done tons of artwork for lots of games. Uh, and that is by Quinnick Games. One thing I'll say, uh, one thing I'll add actually, this board, I've seen reports of this board being a bit flimsy. I find it's pretty well constructed to be honest, and if I knock the table and give it a quite a good knock here, you watch the when I'm doing it, and look, nothing has moved. I think you'd have to give the sloping board quite a jolt. I think the main problem would be people being cack handed and putting stuff in and knocking them down. So I'm already working on a workaround around that and uh, putting near earth magnets drilled in and glued into the bottom. I'm going to put a metal sheet and it uh, should work quite well. Right, so I've got some uh, six millimeter near earth magnets. They're really cheap, about £6.50 delivered for 50 off Amazon. Um, I put some insulation tape on my pliers so as not to damage the, the uh, edges of the wood. Hold the pliers and use a smaller drill bit first. I think I've got a four millimeter drill bit here. Keep it centralized and go with the slope of the piece of wood. See it goes. And then onto the six mil one. Doesn't matter if you go a bit deeper, because I'll show in a minute. I'm nearly there. That's it. Um, put one of the magnets in. Test that it fits flush first is the important thing. And the way to do that is press it on the surface. And the majority of them do not need gluing, they'll wedge in so tight on a 6mm drill with a 6mm neo magnet. But you test them on a bit of metal board and that's done. Look I've done all these other ones. The only thing is, these ones, these uh, pegs, they're too, they're too small, they're too narrow to countersink the, um, the magnets. So I'm doing another workaround with those. Um, they're, these are the only ones that, that you cannot sink. I certainly can't. I've, can't. I've used a small drill going up to large and they just and it will just split. I've had to repair one. I'll paint that out. But I've used some of that plumber's putty stuff in there that goes rock hard. Um, and it split across here even though I was drilling it carefully. So uh, yeah, it'll be fine because I'm going to um, put the magnets on, glue the magnets exterior like that and I may drill holes through the board so they sit in nicely but the other ones just go in nice and flush the odd one becomes just check it first and I put some um, super glue gel that's the best thing because it's just like a little gel it clings to the side just a few tabs around the side and then press the magnet on and rub and uh, they'll stay in so that's the workaround I've got we'll show the completed bit I've got a few of these old school board things so I'm going to cut one out to the side with my little grinder here and uh, have it stuck under the board perfectly, um, use some double sided tape or something and it should work really well just for the clumsy hands. As I say, it's only if it gets a severe knock really, but uh, it's a little hobby thing to do so we'll see okay, how it Okay so the, uh, the magnetic hack um, has been a success to be honest, Look, there you go. Um, the pieces uh, drilled out, neo magnets put in, um, they work pretty well. It's not. It's bit, well. It's just not going to take any knocking. Now the only thing is, is these ones here. I could have drilled through to get them to sit down. Uh, these magnets on these ones are glued on. They're not going to come off. And they, they still. Do you know what? I was going to drill through this card so they sat down onto the metal plate underneath. But they really don't need it. You know, you place them wherever you want. Just line them up nicely, and they're going to be fine. Um, yeah, so yeah, even at the top it gets them all. And what, how I've done it is, you see there's a metal, metal plate, double sided sticky tape, and I cut up some metal, thin metal plate, and it fits on, fits on fine. So um, yeah, so there you go. You even play it upside, play it upside down <laughs> if you wanted to. So yeah, and um, fits on, fits on the board itself. Pretty, pretty easy. Was it needed? Probably not. Um, just it was a nice little project to do. So there you go, that's the uh, the whole of Agra and that's with the, um, it was no aggro to be honest, that, that's with the with the little fix. 
What would be a really simple one if somebody had one of them lasers, laser cutters, would be to do a nice acrylic overlay, deep overlay, and that would just sit on the top and the bits would fit into it. But the magnets work, work fine. Just don't play with it if you've got a pacemaker. Okay, thanks for watching.